Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Spigs Gaming. I am Spigs. If you guys are new, I do reactions and playthroughs, blind playthroughs here on this channel. If you guys are, again, new. Now, I'm going to be reacting to the sad history of the Grunts and their rebellions in the Halo lore. Um, this video that I am about to watch is from Hidden Xperia. Uh, I will leave a link to the channel down below in the description box for you guys to go check this out, as well as the, the video itself. So I have not seen this at all. Um, I feel like I need to get caught up on some of the lore of Halo without, you know, because I like finding out lore about games and stuff like that. Um, not necessarily going and finding it out myself in games because that's kind of hard to do sometimes. But yeah, I like finding out cool new things about the games that I love. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back. I think that it goes without saying that popping grunts in the head is one of the more satisfying things in life. It's yes. It's one of those things where you know you should feel bad for slaughtering hordes of weak little creatures but the level of satisfaction tends to just outweigh the questionable ethics. However, today, that changes. Today, I'm going to make every single one of you watching this video feel insurmountable guilt every time you satisfy those sadistic urges and mow down hordes of poor, defenseless grunts. Aww. In a lifelong search for the ultimate food nipple, the Grunts have gone through their fair share of traumatic experiences, during and also pre-Covenant. So, to cover their depressing history in the most detail possible, we've got to begin by travelling very, very far back in time. Okay. I'm, I'm intrigued so far. Over a hundred thousand years before the Covenant, believe it or not, the Grunts were actually a space-faring species. On their harsh homeworld of Balaho, they managed to evolve as a species via massive global industrialization, advancing their technology and intelligence to space-faring levels. However, this came at a great cost. This excessive industrialization, coupled with the planet's already harsh environment, led to a total environmental collapse. This caused massive devastation to not only Balaho, but to the entire Grunt population too, squandering years of progress and technological advancement. On the plus side, the Flood showed up not too long after and almost wiped out the entire galaxy. So true. And then the Halos were fired, so the Grunts didn't exactly have to worry about losing all of their progress and years of hard work as a species for that long. After the Halos were fired and the Parasite defeated, most of the main species of the galaxy were receded on their home planets to start anew in the wake of the total galactic apocalypse caused by the Flood. Because the species that were receded were reset to their respective Stone Ages, all their advancement as a race, even after their planet collapsed, was wiped. As such, the Grunts resorted to living on Balaho in various tribes, forced to suffer the environmental consequences of over-industrialization without any of the benefits they once had. Dang. As you'd expect, this severely stunted their growth as a species, and in the roughly 99,000 years between their receding and their discovery by the Covenant, they only managed to become a Tier 6 species, which was two entire tiers below where they once were. Ironically, the sixth tier is the industrial tier, so they managed to just get back to the tier that led to their downfall. Huh. Ironic. <laughs> However, far worse was yet to come. The Grunts were actually the last known species to be inducted into the Covenant, and it happened quite late, around 2,700 years after the Elites, and only 400 years before the start of the Human Covenant War. As you'd expect, the Grunts tried but weren't able to pose any real threat to the Elites, and thus surrendered almost immediately to the Covenant. They were Dang. actually the first species forced into joining the Covenant through aggression as opposed to their own decision, and were subsequently made the lowest ranking members. When a huge Covenant fleet showed up to their defenseless planet, sadly, they really had no other choice. In keeping with this, their culture was almost entirely erased, and their civil rights were next to none. They were treated terribly by the Covenant and were not even allowed to carry weapons, so self-defense was never an option if a poor little Grunty happened to get into an altercation with another member of the Covenant. Despite their forced membership and low status, they actually became avid believers in the Covenant religion. Certain Grunt theologians believed that the Forerunners, before their ascension into Godhood, 
looked like the Grunts, which somehow a large portion of their population actually bought. It's not hard to see why they were so low ranking. However, what became of their home planet was actually pretty sad. Prior to the Covenant stumbling upon Balaho, it was actually severely overpopulated with Grunts, but afterwards it was almost empty. This allowed the Covenant to begin to harvest it and its moons for resources. The planet was left with very little behind for the few who still lived there, and the moons were hollowed out and desecrated to fuel the Covenant Forgers. What little the Grunts still had left after their already tragic history was now merely a resource for the Covenant, and the poor little guys could do nothing to stop it. Aww. That said, however, it wasn't all bad news. Given what their species had done to their planet hundreds of thousands of years prior, which was a planet that already had a very harsh environment, the Grunt's induction into the Covenant may have ironically saved their species in the long term. The collapse of Balaho's environment only exacerbated the extreme weather, which was a constant threat thanks to the planet's two winter seasons. As such, average lifespan was low, and infant mortality rates and senicide, which is the killing of the elderly, was high thanks to the constant low supplies of food to get them through the winters. What? Winter is coming is a phrase that the Grunts are all too familiar with. As of joining the Covenant, however, these are no longer issues they have to face. To quote the Halo Encyclopedia, producing enough food to last the winter season and burning plague victims no longer rank as the top two priorities of the Grunts' daily chores. Holy but anyways, crud. that's far too much good news for this video. Let's get back to making you feel guilty for killing the Grunts, and I think that this next event will do just that. One of the properties of the Grunts is their extremely high reproduction rate. It's why they were the perfect fit for Covenant cannon fodder, among other reasons. But this, uh... This unique characteristic would lead to one of the most destructive events in their species' entire history. See, they weren't the only species at the bottom of the Covenant pecking order. They were in fact the second species to be ranked that low. The Jackals were the first. As such, the Grunts were forced to live in the same districts of High Charity as the Jackals, and their tendency to overpopulate began to cause big problems. As the Grunt numbers grew exponentially, extreme pressure was put on the Jackals, who lived there before them, eventually forcing the Jackals to relocate when the females were going through their incubation cycles. This put the females under extreme stress, which sadly caused the Jackal infant mortality rate to rise sharply. In a bet for revenge, Jackal shipmasters poisoned the infusion tanks that contained chemicals pumped into the Grunt's portable methane tanks that literally allowed them to breathe, leading to thousands of male Grunts becoming sterile. This was the event that would finally usher in the Grunt Rebellion. What? This constant back and forth between the two species was overall ignored by the higher ranking members of the Covenant. A young Truth conducted an investigation into the poisoning, finding enough evidence to punish the jackals involved. He presented his case to a high ranking political body who dealt with disputes between species, but this body, the Ministry of Concert, decided to overlook the case in favour of the jackals, despite the overwhelming evidence. They believed that a few thousand sterile grunts wasn't worth bothering the jackals with, and as such, those implicated were only given small fines, and the ships involved were repaired and brought back into service. This grand betrayal was really the straw that broke the grunts back. When combined with their years of mistreatment by the Covenant, the Grunts had simply had enough and began to rebel aggressively. I can they see lashed that. out at every member of the Covenant, inflicting far more damage than any thought they were even capable of. Their great numbers worked in their favour, and when they managed to get their hands on weaponry, they became a truly merciless force. The lower districts of the Holy City of High Charity were turned into war zones. The Covenant higher-ups were genuinely taken aback at how much of a threat the Grunts posed, and not even the elites were able to quell the rebellion of such a seemingly inferior species. As the conflict continued to escalate, the Covenant had to resort to the most desperate measures ever taken since its conception to bring an end to it. Not only was a new Arbiter appointed to deal with the rebellion, but the way he dealt with it was unlike anything the Covenant had ever done before. He ordered the glassing of Balaho and forced oh the rebelling Grunts on High Charity to watch as their homeworld and the few left living on it were turned to ash. Oh my gosh. This act of brutal subjugation finally brought an end to the Grunt Rebellion. However, despite the extreme levels of rage-fueled bloodshed the Grunts had caused, they actually came out of it better off. 
Their tenacity in battle didn't go unnoticed by the elite, who not only showed them mercy, but honoured them for their warrior spirit, and allowed them to serve alongside them in battle as armed infantry. Hooray for Grunt rights, I guess. However, that wasn't the only Grunt Rebellion. As far as we know, there have actually been at least 15 more in the history of the Covenant, with the most recent being quelled by Ripper Morami. He led a strike team of elites and hunters to end this disobedience in mere days, and the success of which led to his swift rise in the Covenant ranks, and eventually him becoming an Arbiter. These rebellions aren't even just limited to the Covenant either. A grunt by the name of Yap Yap even had the balls to rebel against Atriox and the Banished, so he could continue his search for the golden methane hydrate mines of Saboteur, supposedly hidden on the Ark. Although, don't take this dude too seriously, he wears the Prophet of Truth's crown that he found somewhere on the Ark, and literally talks to his throne, and his battle tactics include riding brutes and throwing thousands upon thousands of grunts at the enemy until they give in. A strange fella is Yap Yap. So, despite their depressing history, in recent years the Grunts have really started to show their oppressors who's boss. However, that doesn't erase how incredibly saddening and awful their history is. They went from possibly becoming a spacefaring intergalactic species to suffering the complete collapse of their environment, genocide, and plague, being forced into joining the Covenant in which they were oppressed and mistreated, and in their attempts to protest, had half their home glassed into submission. Just think about that every time you hear the happy cheers of a Grunt's birthday party. He was right, I am sad now. Um, I, I've never heard that before. Um, I've never like heard the Grunt's story. I guess now it makes sense, you know, like when the Grunts would talk and everything, how they would act, you know, it's like they would say, take the elites or, you know, or something like that. Jeez, that is sad. So like they were like forced to join the Covenant because they couldn't fight back. They, they probably didn't have any weapons on their, on, on their home planet. And then they couldn't take on the elites. Oh my gosh, that is sad. I am sad now. I will never be turning on grunt birthday party again thanks a lot thanks a lot i'm sad now okay everybody that is it for today's video if you guys enjoyed it be sure to comment down below what you thought of this video and are you sad too like i am this is very sad be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to smash the like button because that helps out the channel tremendously hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you guys soon bye everybody